Well, Joe, uh, Richard, it's good to see you. Uh, you know, what, one of the things I love about working at Mayo Clinic is this great collaboration between neurology and neurosurgery. Uh, you know, patients notice that and I think it benefits them by having that great input from both departments on difficult problems. We can actually map the whole brain before surgery, sit down with your team, and come up with a much more precise plan for surgery than we would have maybe five years ago. What's really great about Mayo Clinic here is that our neuroradiologists are really at the cutting edge of that. In terms of providing us, they have a, a, a passion. They come to the OR and say, how can I make your surgery better? So it used to be in the old days that when you had brain surgery for epilepsy or a tumor or an, a cavernoma, that if they woke up and they were able to talk and walk, that was good enough. But now, one of the first questions uh, Richard and I ask patients at the neurosurgery clinic is, what do you enjoy about life? What do you do? What do you enjoy outside of work? And do you play the piano, maybe, or do you golf? Well, if, we, if they're not golfing after surgery, we have not done a good job. But one other level of safety is awake surgery, where we can oh, yeah. actually keep the patient yeah. awake. In our last case, one of your neurologists was actually sitting next to the patient. Think about this. Yeah. The whole operation, holding the patient's hand and actually watching a short movie and talking to her about her life and what was important to her, listening to music together. While it seemed like a casual conversation that was in and of itself reassuring to the patient, sure. your neurologist was actually, in a, in, a, in a way, getting a very sophisticated neurological exam. Correct. And that um, would not be possible, you know, by just testing, having them count to seven, for example. They were actually talking about their life. You're testing memory, you're testing uh, intellect, intellectual skill. Because again, the goal is getting them back to golf, getting them back to singing, getting them back to gardening, perhaps, and that's very important. I think you hit, uh, like uh, to me, like the biggest point of all is, uh, and something we didn't always talk about, but I think was always understood, but you, you highlight it, it's about quality of life. Right. That's and, right, yeah. And, and it's a very high level of respect for the patients, yeah. understanding their life, not just you have a disease, you're a person, you mentioned before, the eloquent parts of the brain are the parts that make you you. When you stop being who you were before you came to see neurosurgery and neurology, then it's not the same as preserving who you are. Right. And that's, that's right. the tremendous success that we get with the new technologies. And, and I think that's important, giving the patients also more information right. That's right. about do patients really know when they're getting into surgery. I tell patients that if you have a complication of surgery, it's going to hurt me emotionally, but you're the one who's going to have to live with it for life. And I think that's very important to recognize that the patient is not just another case, but actually somebody who has to live with that either problem or that lack of quality of life, in essence. You know, Absolutely. You brought up a really interesting point, though, about when you have the interaction with the patient and you have it on a personal level. It's a person-to-person -person conversation. It's not a hierarchical conversation. I'm the doctor. I'll tell you what's good for you. And having been a patient myself, and I don't know how often you've had inter yeah. Yeah. You know, personal encounters with the health institutions, you need to be very sensitive to what the patients feel That's and what true. the patients want to do um, and really give them the experience to say, let's go through this together, not just, I'm going to do this to you. Whereas here at Mayo, patients get to hear uh, about all the options and then walk away with perspective. I think that one of the most valuable things we can give a patient before we even think about surgery or medication are really two big things. One is compassion for their problem, some understanding of who they are as a whole human being, including their, their family and network, and the second is perspective. Great. It's one of the most underrated things that we offer, but probably the most important. When you work, as we do with a team, in a very significant interdisciplinary team, which is a neurosurgeon, neurologist, mm -hmm. then it's the EEG techs, and it's the nurses on the neurology neurosurgery floor in the EMU, even the ICU. Sometimes patients don't tell us everything because they're nervous, and they're either afraid of the physician, the epileptologist, or the neurosurgeon. And yet when they, we, we have a conference, and we talk with the nurses and the techs, and everyone else that encounters them, we get feedback and information that the techs get, that the nurses get, that we never get. That's right. And, yeah, and having a strong right. team really allows us to truly get to know the person, get to know what they're thinking. And if we can address that before the surgery or for their recovery, that is a whole level of care that's way above just going in and doing surgery, or way above just giving them a pill. So that compassion and that, that comes from having the interdisciplinary team that we like to have. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I think still believe despite all the technical and neat advances, Medicine at the end, at its most fundamental, is holding someone's hand and walking them through a journey. And maybe that's an overused term, but my point in, in bringing this up is it's the talking and kind of always highlighting, here's what's going to happen. 
and we can look at a patient and say, these are the options that you have for both of these, or one is going to be better than the other for you. But the comprehensive approach really is to really offer the patient what's the best medicine we can offer you, what's the best options for surgical treatment or conservative treatment, given what you desire to do with the rest of your life. And that, that really becomes patient-centered, compassionate care.